Hi everyone, I'm Gervazo and this is another Tech Tips video. Today I would like to share with you some of my experiences on using Realsteady Go software with GoPro's footage from FPV drones. Okay, first of all, what is Real Steady Go? Real Steady Go is a stabilization software. It's not free. It costs uh, 99 United States dollars. I bought uh, it about six months ago in a, in a limited time offer for 69. Maybe you can wait for another offer like that. But I think that uh, 99 dollars is nothing compared on what this software can give you. It is developed and uh, made only for GoPro's cameras. It has an incredible magic uh, ability to stabilize video and make them look cinematic and super stable. It's something weird. Just to take an idea of what I'm talking about, take a look at this. Okay, this magic is not so easy if you're going to use a camera like the GoPro Hero 5, the GoPro Hero 5 session like this, or a GoPro Hero 7. If you take a look on the Real Steady Go website, under the support tab, you can find a drone vibration fixes, and they explain that the GoPro Hero 5, 5 session, and 7 have a very sensible gyro inside. So. If you're going to fit them on a FPV drone like this, with an hard mount like this, all these vibration and movements that are coming from your drone flying in the air will affect the gyro sensors and they will destroy at all the stabilization effect that Real Steady Go can provide you. This video is not intended to people that are using GoPro 6, GoPro 8 and I guess also GoPro 9 because that cameras have a very different kind of sensors in the gyroscope. They are not going to need to be fitted on a soft mount. They can be fitted with a hard mount like this. And in effect, this one is made for a GoPro Hero 8 because I have in my setup, I use this GoPro Hero 5 session and also a GoPro Hero 8 that is the one that I'm recording from right now, so you can see it. With six, eight, and nine, just print a TPU mount or strap them with a Velcro or anything you want, a zip tie directly to your frame, to your drone frame, and they will work fine with the Real Steady Go software. Okay, so hard mount and soft mount. A soft mount is a mount that is made and taught to avoid vibrations coming from the frame flying to your cameras. I spoke about something similar in my previous Tech Tips video uh, on how to use the Insta360 Go on a soft mount, but in that case it was to avoid jello effect. This time is just to be sure that all the vibrations coming from your frame are not going to affect the GoPro gyro sensors. Let's go on with examples, that I guess is the easiest way to understand what I'm talking about. Let's think on fitting this GoPro Hero 5 session on an art mount like the one you can see on this 5 inch freestyle drone. This is an art mount printed in TPU and you can fit the Hero 5 session right here and tie it strongly with this Velcro, um, as you can see, it is strongly fixed to the drone. And now let's take a look at what could be the result of stabilizing with Real Steady Go a footage coming from a GoPro fitted in this way. Okay, look at that. You can see all those 
more and more vibrations coming all around and this is why all the vibrations coming from the motors from the props that are moving the drones all around came directly to the gyroscope of the GoPro and real steady is feeling all those movements and tries to understand on how to stabilize but and it's not so easy it's not completely easy at all so the result is awful this is not usable at all this a video like this okay okay now real steady go support page tells you to use something like zip ties to fit the gopro in something like that is a dampening or a damper anti-vibration support i tried it on myself and well, it works, it works fine, but on the first crash I destroyed all the zip ties that uh, were uh, keeping the GoPro case, a uh, case made like this, made of TPU, on the drone, and uh, I lost my GoPro well, around my, my drone, not so far, that I was lucky I, I found it. And there I tried to understand how to solve this problem. And in this case, like we, we did with the Insta360 Go, I decided to use O-rings, rubber ceilings, something like this one or this one. Of course, they have to be thicker than the one we used with the Insta360 Go because of the more weight that a GoPro Session 5 or a GoPro 7 have. And they also have to be securely fixed with the GoPro case and this support that is the one that is going to be fitted with your drone frame. This one, for example, it was the one I was using with this Diaton Taycan and because it was on a Sine Whoop, it, I designed it not so strong because a Sine Whoop is not uh, intended to make freestyle maneuvers or uh, crash or something like that is just made to fly safely and slowly around little obstacles and near to the ground and it worked well it worked uh, a lot and so i decided to try to make something similar also on one of my five inch freestyle fpv drones and i designed something like this one okay here it is a little bit stronger and not so flexible but is enough and they worked very very well take a look at this okay in this video you can see how the real steady go software can make this magic it's uh, it's weird you know it's uh, a very strange stabilization effect with all those zoom in and zoom out and crop images uncrop it is very a strange effect, but uh, it's it's incredible. I think, in my opinion, it is something that is way way better than hypersmooth or something like it, or even the flow state stabilization from Insta360, for example. Real Steady Go, it's a, an insane software. There's there's nothing to add. Okay, so. As you have seen in the video, if you're going to fit your GoPro Euro 5 Session, Euro 5 or Euro 7 on a soft mount like this, on an FPV drone, the result is going to be outstanding. Like uh, as you are going to use a GoPro Euro 6 or a GoPro Euro 8 or 9. Yes, it's something more difficult than just a solid fix like this, I know but uh, not so difficult if you have a 3d printer on your own can get on a solution like i made with this one i'm going to give you in description uh, a link to thingiverse with uh, especially this case that i designed for the gopro hero session 5 i guess that also the rung cam 5 and also the cadex orca can fit inside this because they are quite all the same dimensions. This one is printed in a one piece of TPU. It is, as you can see, it is very easy to open and close and it gives you a very easy access to the camera. And it is also made with a little socket in here that is designed to fit the Tim Black Ship ND filters. These ND filters right here, as you can see, 
put it in vertical and then put the GoPro inside and just tie the velcro and here it is you have the GoPro Hero 5 session fitted in a complete protective case made of TPU with a velcro so in case of crash it will stay inside this case and you have the Timbleck ship ND filters in front so this is maybe could be another interesting episode of tech tips on speaking about ND filters and how to use them correctly with different light conditions okay it's enough for today tech tips episode don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are interested in other videos like this one and comments put likes thumbs up and uh, if you would like to share some of your experiences with me as i said i don't like to be a teacher i just want to be an fpv enthusiast that uh, likes to share information with uh, other fpv pilots and i guess that this is the correct way to support our community correctly and uh, quickly okay see you next time and remember stay always work in progress